custodial that of late Henry Pom in Assam Sivasagar Jail, Nagasmar Association demands impartial investigation into Pom's dad in a later address to Governor of Nagaland. NMA calls for identification of perpetrators and stringent action on them as per law. In memory of 1960 multi-crew genocide victims, Pottery Student Union observes the 62nd Pottery Black Day at Freedom Park of Matikru Village. During the program, Pottery Student Union President Mupato Nuti urges Nagas to acknowledge Matikru massacre, hailing it as the supreme sacrifice done in the history of Naga struggle. As heavy rainfall continues to torment many parts of Nagaland, a landslide trigger in season terrain kills one girl in Mon district. Initial reports reveals that landslide occurred when four people were returning from the field that led to the girl's death on spot. District Health Society under the Chief Medical Officer of Noclag along with the Integrated Child Development Sacrifices conducts an anemia screening team in Noclag. Around 150 students screened on the program for anemia and supplementary food and IFA tablet also distributed to students during the game. Taking cognizance of social media circulation, Mokchung police apprehends the drunk drivers who was dri driving a Mokchung bound sumo from Dimapur on Tuesday. Notably, the passenger sumo was halted in halfway near Assam Khatkati by the passenger, as the driver found who was in an unconscious condition. Hello and welcome to Nagaland TV. This is your anchor Rovin Yalama and you're watching NLTV English Primetime. Now I shall read the news in details. The Naga Mothers Association has demanded partial investigation into the custodial death of the late E. Hanvi Palm. In a letter addressed to Governor of Nagaland, NMA expressed its deep shock at the custodial death of late E. Hanvi Palm in Sivasaga jail at the hand at the hands of the Assam police with cruel physical assault and torture. The NMA President Abiyu Meru and Joint Secretary Malwang Tangi Lady further denounced the Assam police debuts conduct or and demanded that the terrible that should be the subject of a fair investigation and a harsh legal action be taken against the police employees. The Pochuri Student Union observed the 62nd Pochuri Black Day on September 6 at Freedom Park, Matikru Village under Mallory Subdivision. According to a press release from the PSU, the program was chaired by Tiang Roto Tsang Kurie, President of Matikru Village Council, while a welcome note was delivered by Wilson Katiri, Chairman of Matikru Village Council. The President of Pochuri Student Union, Mupato Nuti, stated that the Matikru massacre should be acknowledged by every Nagas as it is the supreme sacrifice done in the history of Naga struggle and further aided that enough of blood was shed and tortures were meted upon the Nagas in all Naga inhabited areas and that they should all rise and be not enticed with packages and temporary solution but rather stand as one. A tragic incident occurred in Mon district, Nagaland, after a heavy rain triggered landslide on Tuesday evening. According to reports, the landslide occurred when four people were returning from the field and one girl victim reportedly died on spot.
The Shimato Chaso BJP party had a meeting come treasure dedication program at Shangpur village on Tuesday. All the BJP leaders and members are ready for upcoming 2023 general election under the leadership of former Shimato Chaso MLA and BJP state executive member R. Tohangba. 120 boot level committee and 200 members attended the meeting with strong firms. An NMEA screening camp was conducted by the District Health Society under the Chief Medical Officer of Noklak, along with the Integrated Child Development Services at the Government Middle School in Noklak on Wednesday. As a part of the National Nutritional Week and the Rashtriya Portion Ma, the camp was conducted by the medical officer, lab technician, nurses and Angawadi's workers of Noklak Town under the supervision of Hoi, DPM and P. Hamping, Senior Super Supervisor, Department of Social Welfare. Around 150 students were screened on the program for anemia and supplementary food and IFA tablets were also distributed to the student during the game. All the government employees assigned to Longchim Town to Mankong Lamba Subdivision Mokshun District have been notified to report to the places of assignment by September 30. If they fail to do so, the Longchim Ad hoc Town Committee has threatened to initiate action. The Deputy Chairman of the LATC, A. Chuba Longkuma, stated that the committee was forced to issue the instructions since repeated requests from the NGOs and LATC on the subject had gone unanswered. The Department of Expenditure and the Ministry of Finance released rupees 377.50 crore for Nagaland as a part of the six monthly installment of post devolution revenue deficit grant on Tuesday. This installment has taken the total amount released to the state during 2022 and 2023 to rupees 2,265 crore. The PDRD grant recommended by the 15th Finance Commission for Nagaland is rupees 4,530 crore. The Finance Minister Ministry released the six monthly installment of PDRD grant to 14 states for the current fiscal year. The eligibility of state to receive this grant was decided by the 15th Finance Commission based on the gap between assessment of revenue and expenditure of the state after taking into account the assessed devolution during the period. The Deputy Commissioner of Parent, Vinit Kumar, formally launched the project and reaching every child at the DC conference hall on Wednesday. The main aim of the project is to support the children belonging to marginalized children and will also improve accessibility and ensure quality education for underprivileged children. Vinit expresses and hopes that the project will help in changing the lives of many marginalized children and further urge the team to maintain transparency while maintaining the donation received from various groups or individuals. The Nagaland In-Service Doctor Association will hold its general body meeting at the Capital Convention Center Kohima on September 9, with registration to start at 9.30 a.m. The association issued a press release requesting all of its members to attend the conference to make it a grand success. The National Socialist, Socialist Council of Nagaland has expressed shock and sadness over the untimely demise of Brigadier Joshito Yapto of the General Headquarter. Naga Army, after a prolonged illness on Monday, Yapto was born under the Yunnan Territory village of Shuhoi and joined the Naga Army on July 15, 1985, and subsequently served the Naga Army in various capacities till his last break at the Zion Hospital, Dimapur.
The group mentioned that the void created by the death of the brigadier would be difficult to fill. In four damned and father stated that his name will be recorded in the pages of the Naga history to be remembered for all time to come. The Deputy Commissioner of Timinu, Dr. Jassikwile, informed all concerned individuals and organizations with portions of the allotted plot of land for falling within the earmarked lane area proposed for road widening have been to notify to clear and remove any materials or structures from the sur survey land area within 15 days of the days of publication of notice. According to the DC, the notification is issued to enable smooth road access for the purpose of facilitating expansion and development of the district administrative headquarters, including the development of government offices and modern town infrastructure at the proposed site at Penda area. The 19th Mung Mung Football Championship witnessed a new Avengers in the field of football at Kifri local ground on Tuesday. The United Vikings crowned the champion of the tournament, defeating former 2003 champion Abide FC in a penalty shootout. The United Vikings won the penalty shootout by scoring five goals, while the Abide FC scored four goals to grab the first runs of title. Best player of the tournament awarded to Hevika Awami from United Vikings at the end of the tournament. The medals and certificates were distributed by a Deputy Commissioner of Kifiri along with Superintendent of Police and Vice President of United Sanctum Student Conference. The champion United Vikings went away with one lakh rupees along with their majestic trophy and certification while first runners-up received 60,000 rupees along with certificate and medals. Assam Chief Minister Himanta Biswa Sharma took a jib at Congress Bara Jodo Yatra, which kick started on Wednesday, and said that the party should conduct this campaign in Pakistan. While stressing that India is already connected and united, Himanta said that India was divided in 1947, and there is no benefit of starting the Bharat Jodo Yatra in India. However, Congress leader J. Ram Ramesh criticized Himanta's statement, saying, Assam CM has to make outrageous statement every day to prove his loyalty to BJP, as he had been a part of Congress for 20 to 25 years. <laughs> कश्मीर से कन्या कुमारी, सिलसर से सोरास्ता, हम लोग तो एक देश है, हम लोग जुरा हुआ हो, तो जुरा हुआ क्या नहीं है? So 1947 में कांग्रेस ने ये भारत को खंडित किया था, भारत और पाकिस्तान बाद में बांग्लादेश भी आया। अगर राहुल गांधी का मन में कोई एपोलॉजी है कि मेरा नाना ने गड़बड़ करके गया था, या पंडित � जो हुआ था वो होना नहीं सही था। अगर उनका मन में रिग्रेड है, तो भारत जोरो और भी भारत का टेरिटरी में करके कोई फायदा नहीं है। आप पाकिस्तान को जोड़ने का कोशिश कीजिए, बांग्लादेश का जोड़ने का कोशिश कीजिए, और अखंडा भारत के लिए प्रोसेस तक कीजिए। अगर आपका मन में कोई रिग्रेड हो पार्टीशन के लिए, अगर नहीं हो कोई भारत बर्स को जोड़ना जरूरत नहीं है ये भारत बर्स बहुत बढ़िया से इंट्रीगेट हो चुका है Taking cognizance of the social media circulation wherein one driver of Edimapu to Mokchung sumo bearing RCNL02T2111 was remarked to be in a highly in Ibrated State, Mokchung police swung into action and arrested the said drivers and further investigation and necessary procedures initiated. According to Mokchung police, a case has been registered under relevant section of IPC and MVA. It may be reminded that the Dimapur to Mokchung bound day sumo was halted in halfway near Khatkati in Assam by the passenger. On 6th 
September 2022 due to the driver who was drunk and was in an unconscious condition. Assam Chief Minister Himanta Biswa Sharma said that the center is likely to sign a peace accord with militant organization from the state Adivasi communities within September. He further revealed that his government has found a gap of around 50 lakh beneficiary after linking Aadhaar cards with Russian cards across the state. The entire process is being carried out under the initiative of Union Home Minister Amit Shah. Reportedly, five militant groups are likely to sign the peace agreement. These five groups are Al Adivasi National Liberation Army, Adivasi Cobra Militant of Assam, Birsa Commando Police, Santal Tiger Force, and Adivasi People Army. This group have been in ceasefire for many years after announcing suspension of operation. Their cadre live at designated came under police protection. As the 2024 general election are around the corner, the politics of the country gets heated up. Former Congress President Rahul Gandhi on Wednesday flagged off the party massive mass contact program Bharat Jodo Yatra from Kanyakumari. Meanwhile, leaders of the Congress have denied any political angle and incited that the real motive of the Yatra is to unite the country and to connect with common people on various issues like inflation, price rise and unemployment. Congress Chief Sonia Gandhi issues a statement after being unable to attend the launch due to the health issues that she will be participating in thought and spirit. The Yatra comes amid the Congress effort to hold internal election, which have repeatedly postponed due to Mr. Gandhi's reluctance to participate. The Padyatra or foot march will begin on Thursday morning, led by Rahul Gandhi. Congress workers and leaders will walk into batches every day to cover 12 state and two union territories over the next 150 days to cover a distance of 3,570 kilometers. As part of a tax evasion against registered unrecognized political parties and their alleged debuts funding, the Income Tax Department launched raid in many states on Wednesday. The searches are being carried out in a number of states including Gujarat, Delhi, Uttar Pradesh and Haryana. The tax department has initiated a coordinated action against the registered unrecognized political parties, their affiliated organization, operation and other parties. This Surprise investigation was taken by the department on the recommendation of the Election Commission, which recently struck off 87 entities from its list of registered unrecognized political parties after they were found non-existent during physical verification. An action was taken against more than 2,100 registered unrecognized political parties, according to the Poll panel for violating election laws, including those related to filing of monetary distribution, failing to update the address, and failing to update the names of office bearers. After two days of incessant rain which brought chaos and killed at least one person, the flood water receded on Wednesday in Bangalore, allowing normal life to resume. According to police, the worst hit areas, worst hit areas where the roads were flood and cleared. The traffic had returned to normal levels. Around 3 billion rupees were announced by the Karnataka state government to assist in paying for the damage caused by the flood in a city where many global companies and domestic startups are best. As the Silicon Valley faced unusually wet monsoon since June 1, it appears that more rain is anticipated to fall over Bangalore through the end of the week. 
according to the weather department. Union Cabinet on Wednesday approved the Pradhan Mantri School for Rising India PM3 scheme for the upgradation of 14,500 schools across the country and Rs 27,360 crore for IT for five years. With an expectation to benefit 1.8 million students, the centre will contribute Rs 18,128 crores to the scheme. Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Monday, on the occasion of Teachers' Day, announced the scheme and said that this school will be modelled, institute and, and encapsulate the full spirit of National Education Policy, NEP 2020. Bharatiya Janata Party leader and Karnataka Forest Minister Umesh Kati passed away on Tuesday night following a cardiac arrest. 61-year-old Umesh Kati was rushed to Ramaya Hospital in Bengaluru after collapsing at his Dollar Colony residence, but he could not be saved. PM Narendra Modi and Karnataka CM Basavaraj Boma expressed grief over the demise of Umesh Kati. CM referred to the minister as his brother and said his death is a huge loss for the state. Kati last rites will be performed with state honor at Bagewadi Balagavi. Meanwhile, CM Boma has said that a holiday has been declared for school and colleges in Balagavi. The border security force foiled a cross-border smuggling BJP BID by Pakistan-based smugglers on Wednesday. BSF seized 370 kg of heroin worth 38 crores and 190 grams of superior quality opium in the village Muhar Jamshir of Fazilka district in Punjab. 50 around of 7.63 ammunition also recovered by the BSF. The BSF also fired on smugglers who tried to run away, taking advantage of the darkness. Earlier, several cases of drug smuggling by Park Bay smugglers foiled by the border security force in Punjab in the last few days. The Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment has extended the date of registration for Yasas V Entrance Day 2022 till September 11 for top class school education for OBC, EBC and DNT students through the web portal. The central government will provide a scholarship of Rs 75,000 per annum under the scheme for classes 9 and 10 and Rs 125,000 for classes 11 and 12, covering the school fees, hostel fees and many more. The selection of students will be done through merit in the entrance test which will be held on 25th September by the National Testing Agency. This is all for today. For more updates, keep watching Naglin TV. Naglan TV, stop Manulaga Awas. Watch us live on Geo TV and on your television.